Welcome to St Faith's Church here in Leon the Solent. This is the Church of England Parish Church for the town and as you probably know my name's Paul, I'm the vicar here at St Faith's. Now Christian churches like St Faith's are places where people can meet together to pray, to celebrate special events and to worship and learn about God. The early Christians used to meet in people's homes. And today, churches meet in buildings like St Faith's, but also in schools and in community centres and in homes. At the moment, because of the pandemic, we have found different ways to meet together over the previous year, just like you've had to do at school. We are streaming services on YouTube and on Facebook, we sometimes meet on Zoom, and we're having socially distanced services here in the building. But these, like what's happening at school at the moment, are not as good as when we meet in person together. So let's go into the building and find out about this building, St Faith's Church. My name's Mrs Chamberlain and I am the Children and Families Lead here at St Faith's and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the building. St Faith's building itself is long and thin but lots of churches are built in the shape of a cross. Almost all churches are built to enable the congregation to face east. There are a number of passages in the Bible which suggest that when Jesus comes back he will return like the rising of the sun in the east. And so facing east reminds Christians as they worship that Jesus is coming back one day. The windows in our church are quite high up and they let in the light, but there are also stained glass windows. Lots of churches have these and they usually display Bible stories or characters or famous Christians from the past. Our windows here show the Bishop of Winchester and St George. Before many people could read, and when the Bible was only available in Latin, church walls were often decorated with pictures telling Bible stories to help those who came in to find out what the Bible was all about. At the west end of the church, we have this, the font. This is a big stone bowl. When people come to be baptised, we put water in here. Now, baptism involves water, which is why we do it. But some churches don't have a font like this. Some churches have a big pool in the floor where, which they can fill with water and they can put people under the water when they were baptised. That's how I was baptised when I was a teenager. Some churches use the river or the sea because that's water nearby. Baptism, which is either being dunked in water or having water sprinkled on your head, which is what we do here, is a sign that you want to follow Jesus and his teaching and become part of God's family. You may have been baptised when you were a child, maybe even here at this font. The church is split into different areas and they all have different names. This is the nave, the main bit of the church, and is the area where the congregation sits for services. If there are a smaller number of people for a service, we might use the side chapel. This is the side chapel and is called the Lady Chapel, as it has Mary, the mother of Jesus, displayed above the altar. The candle ring is often in here. At the moment, because the church is open for daily prayer, people can light a candle in the nave where the candle ring is. Lighting a candle is something that some people like to do when they are praying. It reminds us, like it does in assembly, that Jesus is the light of the world. And when we are praying, we can light a candle as we ask God to bring light into the darkness. 
It can also be the symbol of a person's life. And we might light it when we don't know what to pray for someone, but we just want to remember them before God. The east end of the church, where I am at the moment, is called the chancel. And this is the area where people who are leading services sit or stand. There are seats for the choir, and the organ is at this end as well. We have electricity points here and sound system points for guitars and microphones and keyboards so that we can play music in services and sing along. There are two pulpits at the front of the church from which the Bible can be read and people can teach. They stand up high so that people in the congregation in the nave can hear and see them. And there are also microphones up there so that we can hear them too. The pulpits have little shelves on them to rest the Bible or teaching notes on. Some churches have ornate and detailed pulpits and decorative lecterns shaped like eagles or other creatures and large copies of the Bible to read from. The tables at this end of the church are called altars and there are two of them here in St Faith's. You can probably see them behind me. The altar is the place from which the priest leads the service and particularly leads the celebration of communion, the time in the service where we remember Jesus' death and we share bread and wine to remember Jesus' death. This is the original altar right at the east end of the church. And the priest can stand here and face east as he or she gets the bread and wine ready and blesses it. But all the time at the moment, we use this altar, which is much closer to the people. And the priest faces the people as he leads that part of the service. Around the church, you may have noticed one decoration that is repeated again and again. It is the cross. There are wooden ones, stone ones, ones in glass, cloth ones, fixed ones, ones you can move, lots of crosses. Being nailed to a cross or crucifixion was the way that the Romans killed some of their worst criminals. It was a horrible way to die. Displaying a cross is a bit like displaying an electric chair or a hangman's noose. This would be strange in today's world. But Christians believe that when Jesus was killed on the cross, he did not stay dead, which is why most of the crosses displayed are empty. Christians believe that when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, it made a way for us to be friends with God. And this friendship with God is what we celebrate, we learn about and we enjoy as a community here at church. So you will probably see a lot of crosses in churches, on churches, and even outside churches. So I hope you've enjoyed looking around St Faith's as a sacred space, a space where people come to, to sit, to reflect, to pray, and just remember that St Faith's is open and it's open to the whole community even now in the pandemic. You could come with your family and come and sit down and uh, you could even light a candle or you could think about, or look for all the number of crosses that there are around the building. I'm sorry you weren't able to come and be here and see St Faith's for yourself as a class but I hope to see you sometime soon, back when you're in school and we're able to meet again in person. Goodbye. <laughs>